All right, welcome back. So who is ready to repot our Zygonesia? So this is the Zygonesia Censure Dove piece that I got as a gift last week. Um, she's sat in my home for a week and seems to be doing fine. The new growth that she came with is, I can't tell if it's growing or not, uh, but there is, the media just, even though it doesn't smell bad, it just looks bad. Plus, you know, I'm not a big fan of pots I can't see into. So we are going to unpot her and we're going to put her in one of my favorite pots. I'll put a link to this um, pot down below. I do get it on Amazon, no affiliation. If you enjoy repots, I have a whole playlist. I love repots. I'm sterilizing the Fiskars. I've got, I've got my secateurs. I'm not sure if I'm going to need them but I got them anyway. And then we have our bowl to mix in. I figured I'd show you guys today how I mix my uh, media. Most of the time I already have it done for you and I just kind of tell you what's in it. This way you can kind of see my cooking medium. But I do have my Osmocote beads that I may or may not use yet. Got my perlite. And then this is the little container I was telling you guys that I put the moss block in and then just a little bit of moisture so it's it's always going to be moist it's never going to be soaking wet so it's always ready to go i don't have to wait for it and then of course i've got my charcoal that i got at my local nursery and this was only 10 bucks and it is lasted me for a while i bought it last fall and it's still almost full so let's get started oh and i did get the cinnamon as well just in case so we'll move this out of the way. Let me put my gloves on. So uh, this is a variegated Zygonesia. I have a Zygopedalum Zygonesia hybrid that I have tried in bark. I have tried in bark and moss. I have tried in a lot of moss, a little bit of bark, a little bit of bark, a lot of moss, vice versa, that whole thing. So I recently in December potted her into a moss perlite mix and she's loving life putting on a growth that is almost mature hopefully blooms if not there's a second new growth already coming so i am just going to put her in the same thing only i'm going to add the charcoal so i forgot the charcoal in the other one it looks like she's just going to come right out of the pot oh, let me move this is the one i'm going to put the dirty stuff in let's just kind of shake her out and let's oh wow what's not oh nice root system look look at the root system already on her so she is already set up for success and i'm thinking that the pot i picked might be too small but we will see so just kind of gently take i see okay so she's in moss looks like small bark some perlite a lot of moss though so I'll be putting her back in pretty much what she is already used to being in, just nice and fresh. And actually, it looks like we have two plants here, guys. Either two plants or a new uh, section that just divided itself. Either way it goes, I'm going to put it in the same pot just to make sure. Oh, goodness. And these roots are all tangled up. But some of these aren't any good, like these... That are tangled aren't any good so i'll just i don't mind snapping them to get get it loose yep looks like it is a branching root system so if i do end up snapping some of these roots um hopefully it'll just encourage them to go ahead and move forward looks like this is the original pot because it's got the decaying um kind of that peat moss spongy seedling thing that they put them in and we have two little small bulbs here that aren't doing anything so we'll just take them off and that's the one with the new growth so i have to be uber careful when i'm messing with her not to damage that new growth she does have this small little back bulb right here if you can see it um should i keep it on there or not you know i don't think it ne she needs it um especially since the roots that are on it are dead and it was pretty much detached already so Let's just get the old sheaths off of here and being careful not to ruin this new growth. All right, got new growth coming in right here. You can see that. I'm not sure. But sorry for the lighting, guys. I was going to film earlier. Had a lot to do today, and then by the time I got home, it was already dark. Plus, it was supposed to storm today, so I was kind of waiting for that. And I was like, eh, oh well. Didn't do any of that, so we are filming a little bit later than I normally do. I like to film when the sun is out because I like all that natural lighting. 
but it just didn't happen today so we'll just move on this particular orchid or one similar and you have any tips go ahead and leave in the comments down below and then go ahead and hit that like button for me that just helps me out doesn't cost you anything and while you're there go ahead and hit subscribe yeah i think i think i'm pretty sure that this pot right here is going to be too small for this two sections well let's finish cleaning her up and then we'll we'll see and if i need to i'll just shut us off and start over and go get a new pot i didn't go get another one because i was thinking you know she'd fit right on in there i was not expecting all these roots again the benefit of having a clear pot i would have seen all these roots and known that she was not going to fit in this pot that i had originally picked out for so roots are good on this one i don't see any new growth on here but like i said i'm just going to pot them up together because with them being separated maybe that might encourage this one to go ahead and shoot out another um growth like i said i really don't know anything about this orchid um it just the only thing i can find online is that it likes to stay in moist media it doesn't like to be wet but it doesn't like to stay dry um, prefers higher humidity than I can pr probably give it, but it is going to be sitting on the sh on a shelf that I have um, a bowl with some pebbles and some water in to kind of increase the humidity in the area for my Nepenthes. So there will be an increase in there, and that might help with that. And if nothing else, I can spritz her every day and kind of create some humidity around that. Doesn't look like I have to cut very many roots off either. I mean, this is a very healthy plant. I am going to stop it right here, guys, and go grab a different pot. Again, this is one of the benefits of having a clear pot. Had I had a clear pot, I would have seen all of these beautiful roots, even if they weren't healthy and viable, which these are extremely healthy and viable, then I would have at least known to get two sizes. Okay, so what I did was I actually grabbed two different pots. I know this pot looks almost the same size as this one here but see how this one's kind of short and squatty this one's a little bit deeper um whoops not by much but just in case i did get this one here i don't want to put it in too big of a pot because i am going to put moss in there and i don't want the moss to be wet for too long so we shall see let me move this one over here to the side so i went ahead and cleaned off her leaves i've sprayed her with uh, rinsed her off and then sprayed her with hydrogen peroxide I'm going to go ahead and cut some of these. Now that I've kind of rinsed her off, I can see some of the roots need to be cut off. So we'll just cut those few that do need to be cut off. And then we will get our media mixed together and get her in a pot. And then we will see what happens. All right. I think that was it. It was just those one, that one on this one. Yep. And then this one here. Let's just double check. Again, don't want to put any anything nasty in there and cause any spoilage all right let me set this tray to the side get my mixing bowl dry my hands off a little bit all i do guys is i pop the top and then i fluff whoop, without throwing it everywhere i fluff my moss a little bit and if you can see you can see it's it's wet but it's not i can't wring water out of it so it's always ready to go and this way i don't have to soak it and then wring it out it's just there when I need it. And then I will pull these strings and whatnot out as I go along. Put a little bit at the bottom there and pull out. You don't want to leave these things, these little, sh these little things like this um, in there. They don't do any, I think they look tatty. I don't, I don't know that it bothers it or anything. I just think it makes it look tatty. Um, put a little bit of perlite. And again, I don't... I don't measure i just kind of put it in there until i'm like okay that looks like that's an and then we'll just grab some charcoal and like i said like i cook i just mix it up the only thing with the charcoal the charcoal does make the moss look a little eh. it's supposed to also keep it fresh so we'll see we'll see all right so have our media mixed up see which one of these will work the best let's use let's do the one with the bigger root system first and just see uh, you know what i think that will be okay but let's see this one first kind of like that better though because they're not so squished down they're a little more open and then this way they can continue to grow and it allows for these long roots here to also get in there all right so that is the new dire direction of growth here and this one may or may not push up another new direction of growth so i'm going to do this one kind of 
I'm gonna put them in there like this with that new direction of growth. And then I'm just gonna kind of set it right in the center so that if the one division that doesn't have a new growth decides to go ahead and shoot out a new growth, then it's not needing to be repotted. So I'm gonna put some moss at the bottom just to keep those roots from growing straight through. And she appears to be a climber as well. So I'll set her up a little bit higher. So when you have roots like this, if you just, when you put it in and just kind of twist, and I like to kind of twist and bounce just to make sure I'm not, you know, breaking anything. And then you can use your finger and just gently push things down. So open that up just a little bit here in the middle so we can get some media down into the middle. And then with this moss being so soft, I can just kind of push it in there. And I do know that Zygonesia do not like a lot of air around the roots. So I'm gonna make this as compact as I can, but not super tight. Because I don't, like I said, we don't wanna suffocate. We just want it in there nice and snug. And then I'm gonna top this off with some bark just to keep this top layer from growing algae from the light. She is a little wobbly, but with putting the bark in there, that'll help kind of steady her a little bit as well. And then when you have little pieces like this in your sphagnum, you can take that out. It's not doing you any good. All right, let's just double check for air pockets. Up, oh, and we've got some big ones right here. We're just going to use the tag since I don't have a bamboo skewer. Normally I would keep a bamboo skewer for this, but we'll just take the tag and we'll just Kind of push the media down, being gentle because there are a lot of roots in that area as I can see. There we go. And then we got a little, got one over here. Keep pushing until we fill in the air pocket. And we might need to add some more at the top and that's fine. But you just really, when you have these kind of roots, you just want to be really gentle. And if it's anything like a zygopedalum, zygopedalums, oh my goodness, they don't like their roots disturbed at all. So that's why I'm trying to be a little extra careful with this one as well. They're not like Phalaenopsis roots where you can just kind of whatever and just toughen them up. They're a little more sensitive. All right, I think we have all of the air pockets now, guys. And then that means see, I have to put a little more moss because with us filling in those air gaps, the moss uh, got lowered from the top. And then we're just gonna grab some of this bark I have next to me and we're just going to, if it doesn't, I will stake her until she gets a little more established in there. So, all right, yeah, that is doing the trick. Even though this new growth here looks like it's buried in the meat, it's a layer of, of bark on there, so it's not gonna stay. It's just going to help secure her in there. There we go. And I think I will stake this bigger piece just to kind of help hold it together until she establishes a little bit better. And then I'm just putting her in this clay pot and put her back on her shelf and then we'll see how she does. We'll give her a month, keep an eye on that new growth. All right guys, again, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like, a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe, share, do all that good jazzy stuff and we'll see you guys on the next